Darn clever, we Chinese. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. So I just arrived from Europe this evening. I didn't have time to... I'm sorry, miss, but I can't take your check without proper identification. It's a company rule. Anyone in New York can tell you that I... Well, here. Perhaps this will be sufficient security. I'm sorry. Well, is there anything I can do? I'm uh, Jack Gordon. Mr. Gordon, senior pilot on our Western Division. Fine, Police Rollins. I simply must leave for San Francisco tonight. It means everything to me. You see, Jack, there's a rule. Why, uh, I'll vouch for Miss Rollins. Will uh, you just sign this here? It's awfully nice of you. If I, if I weren't desperate, I wouldn't trouble you. Oh, it's no trouble. It's a very short name. There, but that is my very best handwriting. <laughs> Looks beautiful to me. Oh, you should see me when I have my own pen. Season's greetings from the airline. Thank you. I hope they have a lovely Christmas, too. Your ring, Miss Rollins. Oh, but you must take that. Oh, but I don't want your ring. Please, this is purely a business transaction. Oh, but I... You can return it when the check has been cleared. Friend of yours? Not yet. But I have plans. You don't know her? <laughs> well, well, isn't that cute? I wonder if I could interest you in buying a piece of property I own. The Brooklyn Bridge. You don't think it's a... I wouldn't be a bit surprised. <laughs> Get my bag off of the floor of the plane. Jimmy, take it away. 82, Chicago. 82, Chicago. 38, Omaha. 38, Omaha. 75, San Francisco. The weather all right? It's clear as far as Chicago. But do you think we'll arrive in San Francisco on schedule? Sure, we'll get you there. Don't worry. We? Why, last year we completed... Yes, I know. 97 and 6 tenths percent of all flights on schedule. By time to send a telegram. You have five minutes. Thank you. I'm going all the way through. If you want to ask me questions, just sound off. I know all the answers. You seem to. Get wise, big fella. Girls don't fall for dashing aviators anymore. Not since they gave up helmets and goggles. Listen, Meg, I'm getting a little tired of wisecracks. Everybody on this airline seems to think that the minute a good-looking gal comes along, I'm going to rush up and bite her in the neck. <laughs> well, it has happened. What did you hear about that? Well, anyway, that was seven years ago. In the prime of your biting career. Now, listen. I, I know. Don't tell me. You did it just for a gag. Well, sonny boy, don't say I never help you. Her name is Rollins. Felice Rollins. I've never known a girl named Felice. No. You thought all girls were named Goldie or Gussie or Trixie. And what do you think I am? Come, come now. Let's not spoil a pleasant friendship. Anyway, Goldie or Trixie or Felice are all dames. Sure, only this one's a metal type. All right, wise guy. Two bucks is saying I take La Rollins to dinner tonight in San Francisco. Real dough? Yeah, real dough. Sold. Pardon me. <clears throat> Considering the fact I don't trust you where money's concerned, how am I going to know you took her to dinner? Skipping the crack about my honesty, I'll send you the menu with her signature. Hmm. Another two bucks. Well, how do you do, Miss Harkins? I'm Waldemar's governess. And this is Waldemar. Waldemar Pitt the third. Uh, Mr. Waller says you're to take care of Waldemar and me on the plane. Uh, we've never flown before, and it's imperative that Waldemar arrive in San Francisco precisely on schedule. If Sonny Boy doesn't get there tomorrow night, well, I shudder to think of the consequences. And if he doesn't get there? His mother will probably sue for a million dollars. She always has in the past. Well, sue the airlines? Oh, no, Waldemar's father. 
You see, Mr. Pitt is forever getting dates mixed and forgetting to deliver Waldemar on time. And Mrs. Pitt is always bringing soup for contempt of court. So Mr. Waller said you were to take charge of Sonny Boy and me and see that we arrive on time. Uh, Waldemar, come here, please. Uh, Waldemar! Hey, uh, Waldemar! Hey, you get out of there! This is Mr. Gordon, the gentleman who has us in charge. Glad to meet you, young fella. We'll have a lot of fun. Oh, boy, a bullseye. Waldemar, I told you not to do that. Someday you're going to hurt somebody. Somebody will hurt you. Walter. My, this is Waldemar. Hiya, Tut. Well, well, a regular little man making such a long trip. I'll cut it out. Can't you watch out what you're doing? If you were my kid, I'd break you. Thank you, that cute little trick. Jane, tell Mr. Pitt we're on our way. Oh, pardon me. Your name, please? Who, me? Yeah. My name's Palmer, Curtis Palmer. Will we get to San Francisco on time? I think so. Seat number three, Mr. Palmer. On the board. Seat number five for Cleveland. Chicago and West Coast. On the board. Are you Dr. Evans? Yes. You think we get to San Francisco on time? I'm sure we will. Does anybody ever get on a plane just for the ride? Do you? Using the northeast runway... Okay when you're ready. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was just going to hang it up for you. Oh, no, I don't want it fast. I'm sorry to rule the company. Oh, but I told... Oh, well, don't get excited. There's nothing at all. Just a simple little bell. if I move to that back seat there? This one is sort of cramped. No, certainly not. Frisco? No, just going there. Hmm. Practice in New York, eh? No, just coming from there. Everything all right? Quite. Newspaper? Thank you. Over Toledo at exactly 4 a.m. Yeah, 
Is this your first air trip? No. Have you ever flown at night before? No. Things are different at night. It's dark, if that's what you mean. Give me a cup of coffee. You uh, don't seem to be doing so well. Something peculiar about that, Dan. Not peculiar, my boy. Particular. Coffee, Never Mike. drink it. A uh, piece of pie, maybe? Never eat pie. A uh, Waldemars! Where can I find out if there's a telegram for me? On the right of the information desk, Miss Rollins. And goodbye. I leave you here. Oh, goodbye, and thank you so much. Hi, you old buzzard. You flying us to Omaha? You bet I am, and I don't want any backseat driving from you. <laughs> nice talk. How'd you get mixed up in? I'm molding. What's the weather west? Oh, it's okay to Cheyenne. From there on, it's not so hot. Say, they had a fog out there last night so thick, even the birds had to walk. Hmm. Rain and snow moving so fast. Well, it looks like we might reach Reno about the same time. That's not news. What is? See you on the ship, Jack. Okay. Oh, not much. Bob Parker's wife's going to have triplets. No. Well, it's even money. <laughs> you still going into a spin every time you see a blonde? Hey, anybody think to hear you talk that... You're a liar, an even more contemptible liar than your brother. And you're a stupid, suspicious little fool. I tell you, she's here and so is Alex. He's got a lot of things he wants to discuss with you. I'd rather not discuss anything with either of you. Now, look here, Felice. Catherine came to Chicago. I'll admit that. But neither one of us knows where she is now, and Alex doesn't care. I don't believe you. But it's true. All right, you win. Let's forget it. Now, wait a minute. Take your hand off me. Now, listen. It's all quits now. She came in from New York and then decided not to go on to Frisco. All right, I believe you. But I'm going to be in San Francisco when her train arrives. Just the same. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, oh, oh naughty boy. Look out, Randy's got a gun. Not in here, fellas. Finish it outside. Shame on you. If you're going off the plane, I'll take care of this, Mud. How about minding your own business? You've messed everything up beautifully. Well, it's too bad. She'd have been much better off here in Chicago. You think so, do you? I know so. But it saved her a lot of headaches. Her head'll be all right. I'll see to that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Say, what do you mean I messed things up? I thought I was doing you a favor. In the future, if you permit it, I prefer to handle my own affairs. Yeah, that's gratitude for you. Ah, oh, relax. I know the setup. Setup? Now, listen, I'm willing to do anything I can to help you, but you might try to help a little yourself. I really don't know what you're talking about. Well, you don't, huh? 
This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> What's so funny? You mean that all the time you thought I was this girl? Yeah, I still do. <laughs> and, and you tried to help me in spite of it? Well, that's really very sweet of you. Yeah, I'm adorable. Sorry to have to solve the baffling mystery, Dr. Watson, but you see, I'm not that girl. I'm this girl. Pardon me, Jack. A message came through from Waller. Said that Miss Rollins is okay. For you to apologize to her and give her back her ring. Yeah, I know all that. So you're this Miss Rollins, huh? Isn't asking too much. Do you mind telling me who your gun-toting friend is? He's not a gangster. Merely a man I knew in Paris. Oh, nice friends. Says here you sock some Russian duke over the head with an umbrella in a yeah, Paris nightclub and... all that. Here's your ring. Oh, no, you keep that. That was the agreement. I'll have it your way. And now, on behalf of myself and management of the airlines, may I offer my apology? Oh, it isn't necessary. You know, you're really a very nice man. Do you mind not rubbing it in? It makes me feel like a little girl again. When I believe in knights and damsels in distress. I left my armor at home. It hurts my shins. <laughs> Straight message. Eighty-seven cents, please. I guess I've been reading too many tabloids taking you for a bandit queen. That shows you how much I know about women. Lack of experience, that's my trouble. Not a usual disorder of you gentlemen of the air, is it? Well, you see, this flying's a pretty lonely sort of business. Here and there and on again. And... Uh -huh, I know. Hermit of the clouds. Well, sort of. You get way off up there alone and... Well, it seems an awfully long way down to parties and girls and human contact. Jackie! Baby! Jackie, you old fair part of an airplane. Gosh, I'm glad to see you. Hello, Trixie. Uh, hello. Uh, you keeping well? Never better. Gus told me you were coming through, so I simply tore out of bed and simply flew over here. Is that true, love, or is it? Miss Trixie, this is... Ro I mean, uh, Miss Rollins, this is Trixie. Miss Trixie... LeBray. How do you do? LeBray. Oh, uh, Ted will be glad to know you, Miss Rollins. Uh, a friend of Jack's, a friend of mine, I always say. Uh, honestly, the last time I saw this one, he was up on the table doing the fan there. <laughs> I never did find out how I got home that night. I guess I must have flown in through a window. <laughs> Apparently, we're leaving. Excuse me. Bye. Well, I gotta go too, Trixie. I'll... Oh, can't you stay over? No, I can't, honest. I gotta go. Okay, I know how it feels. Drop down on the way back. Yeah, I'll do that. Goodbye, Trixie. Take care of yourself. Yeah, I will. Goodbye. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. I didn't know you had an aunt in Chicago. Well, that was Trixie. I used to know her. Oh, you used to know her. Then why was she so formal? She was raised by a maiden uncle. Everybody aboard? No, Mr. Walter McKitt isn't here. Oh, I'll get him. Come on, Newton, we're flying. Gregory Stefani. How'd he get here? A new way, dear. He just sat down and we built the plane around him. Listen, 
Listen, brother, I don't know why you're here and I don't care. But I'm going to give you a few of the rules. Oh, that would be charming. Rule number one, don't annoy the passengers, particularly Miss Rollins. Perhaps Miss Rollins might decide that. It's already decided. You lay off, understand? And, uh, what else? The cannon. Cannon? Yeah, cannon. Cap pistol gun. I want it. Oh. What for? Because if I don't get it, you'll ride as far as Omaha and no further. Say, what is this, a game? Let's play it this way. You keep the bullets and I'll keep the gun. I'll let be. No, on second thought, you keep the bullets and I'll throw the gun overboard. That'll be even better. Maybe it's none of my business, but who is that guy that got on at Chicago? His name's Stefani. Why? How come he had a gun? On account of they told him there were Indians at Omaha. Waldemar, just look at your hair. Turn around. Oh, Waldemar. Good morning. Did you enjoy your bath? Oh, yes, thanks. Are you on time? Five minutes ahead. I don't have to ask about the weather. It looks lovely. All around the subject are looking lovely. How do you do it so early and at such an altitude? With a lot of bottles and a grim determination. <laughs> Can I look? Thanks. Key Christmas, I look like a bad case of embalming. <laughs> May I? Yeah. Can kind of hide this foliage behind the smoke screen. Well, maybe not. Is it that bad? Say, uh, you don't mind if I kind of keep an eye on you today, do you? I don't think it'll be necessary. I tossed his gun overboard, and I told him to keep strictly away from you. Don't you think it would be better if you let me handle this my own way? Okay by me, but if you need any help, just holler. Trip number five, Chicago to Salt Lake, arriving gate number one. Come on, Hangover, let's us. More coffee? Please. How long do we stay in Omaha? 20 minutes. Come on, Miss Hartkins. We're here. Waldemar. Waldemar. Oh, Hartman. Waldemar. 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 Pie for breakfast makes little boys restless. Miss Dr. Everett, she must fly a lot. He seems so at ease on a plane. It's possible. Hasn't he ever taken this trip before? He might have. I've never seen him before. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll go over and get a magazine. Anything to break the monotony of the trip. That's right. What a big nose you have, grandmother. Wait a minute, Felix. I tell you, she isn't on any train. Can't you believe me? I'm not even trying to, Gregory. You're wasting your time. Well, I've plenty of it to waste. You've always been good at that. May I speak to you a moment? For sure. I'm sorry to bother you, but, well, I need a little help right away. As for instance? I want to find out for sure if a certain girl's aboard the Overland Limited going through Salt Lake this morning. 
Oh, it's a cinch. What time does it get there? Eight o'clock. That's the same as nine here. Yeah. Isn't it? We'll have to hurry. Come on. Uh, what's the girl's name? I don't know. You don't know? I mean, I don't know what name she's traveling under. I'm sure she isn't using her own. Well, uh, do you know what she looks like? Oh, yes. Okay, we'll find her. Papa's brother, Mason Elk Eagle, and moves to every break with the Salt Lake Division. All right, what does she look like? 19, slender, my height. Wait a minute, wait a minute, 19, slender. Your height, small. Blue eyes, brown uh, hair, and a little scar on the left cheek. Ah, uh, the scar cinches it. If she's aboard, Pop will find her. Send that out straight for me, will you, honey? Thank you so much. That's all right. A uh, little toast and coffee, maybe? Toast and coffee, absolutely. Last night you told me you didn't drink coffee. That was last night. Gary, you staying over tonight? Well, you don't have to look so huffy. The last time you were here, we went uh, around Toast the Toast and coffee for two, please. Oh. Uh, ham and eggs or wheat cakes and maple syrup? <gasps> oh, I wouldn't have the cakes. They're leathery this morning. And besides, it ain't real maple syrup. You'll just send it back. Everybody does. Coffee and toast, please. Uh, and yours? Ham and eggs over easy. Ham and over easy, a stack. All right, what's her real name? Well, don't you know? <laughs> I mean the girl on the train. Oh. Well, it's none of your business, but her name's Catherine Rollins. She's my sister. Oh. Of course, it isn't any of my business, but that guy Stefani, he... Well, he doesn't seem like a... He doesn't seem like a very... He isn't. I didn't think he was. Of course, it isn't any of my business, no, but... No, it isn't. But why should a nice girl like... Well, why should a nice girl like you... It still is none of your business. Okay. You win. But if you need any help, just yes, holler. Right. <laughs> I'll make a note of it. fail to have breakfast no more, how about our having dinner tonight in Frisco? So you can win your two dollar bet? <laughs> oh, but Bye and I are always kidding each other like that. <laughs> you must have lots of fun together. Well, I suppose that's that. No, not necessarily. You mean you will? I make a bargain with you. What's that? You get me to San Francisco tonight, and I'll have dinner with you tomorrow night. And if I don't? I won't. Why? I just won't. Oh, there's a swell of... Salt Lake doesn't look so pleasant. I'll say it doesn't. Looks like quite a party up ahead. Gordon's going to have a lot of fun over... You think your friend Mr. Andrews will be here all right? Pop? Sure, he'll be here. There he is now, coming out the door. Waldemar! Waldemar! How many times have I told you stately pace means bodily grace? Hello, Jack. Hi, old smoke eater. Did you get my wire? Yeah, I got it all right. Uh, Miss Rollins, Pop Anders. How do you do, Miss Anders? How about it, Pop? Was she aboard? Yeah, she was aboard. The initials on her bag were KLR. How's she all right? Well, thanks, Pop. We only have a few minutes here, and I have to get into my monkey suit. Take care of Miss Rollins, will you, Pop? Hmm. You expected her to get off. She fooled you. She went right on. Was she alone? No, no. She was walking up and down with a sort of foreign-looking fella. That train gets to San Francisco at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, doesn't it? Yeah, if she's on time. And we get there at 2.15 this afternoon. If nothing happens, you do. You don't think we'll be delayed? Well, there's heavy snowstorms to the north. Coming this way. I can tell by my bunion. Where's the telegraph office? Inside the desk. Wait a minute, Felice. I can explain all that. You can't explain anything. But, Felice, look, you've got me all wrong. I've tried to...
Hey, Miss Harkins on 342 is lying down in the ladies' room. Don't forget her. I won't. Got any mail for me? Where is it? How are they coming, Doc? Everything seems pleasant, thanks. Did you say your office was in New York City? Yes. I used to know about a Dr. Everts on Madison Avenue. You the same one? I never had an office on Madison. I just wondered. May I? Come on, let's talk to Elko. The big bad company will get you if you don't watch out. Oh, hello, Jack. Come on in, it's all right. Looked all right to me. You want to try one? What are you doing, passing them out? It's an old Spanish custom. You know, to kiss the bride. No. Well, for... You two mugs. When was it? No, it wasn't. It will be. As soon as we get to San Francisco. Well, then I got another kiss coming. It's the only way no, to be. No, you don't. What's the matter? You afraid I'll show you up? Hey, Pete, come here and kiss the bride. Oh. Well, well, well. Congratulations, Anne. Nice work, fella. He didn't do the work. I did. <laughs> That's good enough. We can climb through that stuff and stay on top till we get there. I've seen some clouds so thick Professor Picard couldn't climb through them. You can uh, always follow the railroad tracks, you know. I'll pick up the last minute reports before I go. Come on, you two. Could you tell me where I could find Jack Gordon? Have you seen Jack Gordon, Bill? I think he went upstairs. He's in the pilot's locker room, just around the corner at the top of the stairs. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, say, uh, I'd like to talk to you. Well, make it snappy. I've got a lot of things to do. How'd you like to make $5,000? I'd love it. How many people do I have? Oh, no, nothing like that. Well, what then? Come over here. Now, I've just seen the report. The weather ahead is very bad. That's right. Very well. Now, suppose you were forced down, away from the railroad, and you couldn't get started again, say, uh, until tomorrow morning. Well, it couldn't possibly harm anybody. Oh, naturally, I'd expect you to pick a safe field sure. away from the railroad. The bad weather would give you a logical excuse. Five thousand bucks is a lot of dough. I could use it. And the answer is, uh... The answer is you can take your five thousand bucks and get it changed into nickels and grab a ride in a roller coaster. Mr. Gordon. I saw you talking to Gregory. What do you want? Oh, just a little matter of $5,000 for making a forced landing between here and Frisco? You mustn't do it. You wouldn't dare. Say, listen, lady. I've been pushing mail and passengers through since they gave up covered wagons. My record for trying to get through is perfect, and I'm not going to spoil it now. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. You've been perfectly swell. Well, I guess I'm a sap for not doing it. $5,000 is a lot of coconuts. Can't you do something about him? Complain. Have him held here. Oh, don't worry about him. He'd do anything to keep me from getting there. I'll fix that. You get aboard the plane. Follow me. I, uh... I just got the latest dope on the weather. Naturally, I had to play straight in the office there. Yeah? Well, it's pretty bad. It's bad enough to give me an alibi in case I had to sit down. You mean, uh... I mean that, uh... Come on aside here where we can talk it over. I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to take you up on that proposition. Well, now that's more sensible. Wait a minute. Hey, hey open this door. Hey, what's the idea? See, I'm not in here. Open this door, somebody. Hey. Stefani doesn't live here anymore. He accidentally locked himself in the... Uh, 
He locked himself in. Thanks. Scott for Gordon, 342. Testing with Salt Lake. Okay, Scott. Sounds fine. Barometer 2956. Wind northeast 25 and gusty. All set? Yeah. All passengers aboard? Keto, let's aviate. Be bumpy ahead, sister. You better keep an eye on things. All right. By the way, Mr. Uh, Stefani said to tell you that he decided not to go by train after all. He'd much rather fly with you. Stefani? to Gordon, 342. Elko, ceiling 200. Snow flurries. Visibility, one half mile. Wind, northwest, 25. Okay. Hot, so hot. One word, my boy, it stinks. needs any help. You're not going right on into that storm, are you? Don't worry, everything's perfectly all right. I won't stand for it. It's suicide. No, there's absolutely no danger. There's no sense taking such chances. We should insist to turn right back. But we can't turn back. Waldemar's mother would sue. Everything okay back there? Yeah. What do you think? I think it's snowing. Profit, huh? Can we get it'll open up? I think you better climb some before we kiss a mountain top. I think maybe you're right. Jack, come here quick. What's the matter? This fella's gone crazy. Ah! Take it a minute. I'll take care of that cockroach. You gotta go back! Ah. You, you gotta go back! Or you'll kill us all! I, I can't stand it! If, if you don't have, if you don't go back, I'll jump out! Hey, you cut the comedy! 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 Ah. You're trying to kill us and you call it comedy! Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, bullseye! I'll take care of him. You go back where you belong. The second one wasn't necessary. What did you want me to do? Kiss him? What happened? Father got funny and Palmer knocked him cold. Can we better land and get rid of him? Land my eye. If we have to get rid of him, we'll push him overboard. Gordon, 342 to Salt Lake. Gordon, 342 to Salt Lake. Requesting alcohol weather. Elko closed in. Return to Salt Lake or land at the nearest emergency field. Now, wait a minute, Pete. This looks like it might clear up a bit. Return to Salt Lake or land at the nearest emergency field. Okay, coming back. Get on your pants and beats, baby. We're going home. You mean get all home, sweet home? You'll have to get out of here. 
You said you'd go through. Take it. I said I'd try to get through. It can't be done. I'm not going to risk killing everyone just to satisfy you. You're yellow. All right, I'm yellow. Now go back and sit down and be a nice little girl. I won't do it. I'll stay here until you're heading towards San Francisco again. Scram. I'll sock you in the teeth, so help me. What's the matter with Beulah? Her name's Felice. All right, then what's the matter with Felice? None of your business. Well, if they start naming planes like Pullman cars, they can call this one the Squirrel Cage Special. Oh, she's a pain in the neck. Yellow, huh? Because I won't risk nine people's lives, her own included. Well, all right, so what? I know just how she feels, though. Once I start, I hate to turn back myself. Sure, hate to turn back. I wonder if I could sneak through to the south. Now listen, little boy, you better go back the way they told you to. Gordon, 342 to Salt Lake. Gordon, 342 to Salt Lake. Just a pushover for a blonde. Three miles south of Shafter. The weather's breaking to the south. I'm going to try it again. I know. All right, but if it's bad in the south, I'll come back. All right, wait a minute. Take it. Go ahead. Personal message for Dr. Everts. Patient just died. Committee will meet you in San Francisco. Dr. Gulliver. Okay. Dr. Everts. This just came for you, Doctor. three times before when you couldn't make it further north. Station's emergency. Keep the air clear. Go ahead, Gordon. Landing at Strange Field. Exact position unknown. Details later.
Well, my boy, here we are. Wherever here is, this is certainly a good way to come. Oh, we can get out of here. Yeah, three months from now on snowshoes. Well, thanks for saving me a lot of money. Everything's all right, folks. The weather closed in on us, and I thought it best to land and wait for it to clear. Do you know where we are? Well, not exactly. Well, then we're lost. Oh, no, we're not lost. Uh... No, we're not lost. We just don't know where we are. Right, boy. Oh, I suppose you had to land. You don't think I'd have plopped down in this cow corral unless I had to, do you? Not even for $5,000? You go take a running jump in the lake, sister. Of course, you realize you must make every effort to get out of here, if you can. You don't need to worry about that. Have you got enough groceries? Plenty of tea and coffee and some stuff for sandwiches, that's all. Well, go easy. We may need them. And, uh... Hey, hey, hey. You better close the ventilators and pass out the blankets. Okay. Looks like we're in for a long winter evening. Jersey Bank killed a couple of cops? Yeah. Palmer. Well, that's why Grandmother had such a big nose. I was trailing him because we heard his partner was in Frisco. That just died message means they've picked him up in Brooklyn. I could put the handcuffs on him now, but I'm not taking any chances. He's a killer, and I don't want anyone to get hurt. Well, he can't get away from you through this, though. He's freeze to death. Has he got a gun? And he won't mind using it. boy smashed our radio. You're a liar. You little... Oh, Mr. Gordon, remember, please, not his game by words profane. The guy that shot him did it while you was outside. Waldemar, never say guy. Palmer, huh? This is a pretty kettle of fish. Oh, Mr. Gordon, you've got to get us out of here. Oh, lady, will you please shut up? If Waldemar catches cold... Oh. I don't intend to conceal the facts from you. Our radio's out of commission, so we can't send for help. If we're snowed in here so we can't take off in the morning, we may be here for, well, several days. Oh, but we've got to get... That's what you think. Oh, did he really mean that? complicated, isn't it? 
Well, it all seems to have turned out for the best, hasn't it? If your conscience is clear and I'm in $5,000. Let's skip it, shall we? Oh, sure. I sort of hated to see that girl make a fool out of you. What do you mean, make a fool out of me? Very gallant. <laughs> Very gallant of you to uh, try to get it through on time. Under the circumstances. Go on. Oh, I don't suppose she told you that she was rushing to San Francisco to elope to China with another man. Or, uh, did she? Look out. Oh, Mr. Gordon, someone's shooting. some pillows, Ann. Is he dead? No, but we've got to work fast. Get some water. Freddy. Freddy. Oh, I'll get it. Here, stop that. Take this. Yeah, he'll be all right. What did Palmer do after he shot you and Freddy? Took both of our guns and vamoosed. Has anybody got a gun? 
Yeah, I have one. Oh, he'll come back and shoot us. I know it. I know it. I'm so nervous I could jump right out of my skin. Go ahead, lady. We'll make a rug out of it. Oh, look. Look, he's, he's coming out of it. He'll be all right now, Freddy. He hold his head from the back. You better pass out some hot coffee. You all right, Doc? I'm fine. I'm going forward. Like to Gordon three four two. Salt Lake to Gordon three four two. Gordon three four two to Salt Lake. Salt Lake to Gordon three four two. Gordon three four two to Salt Lake. Salt Lake to Gordon three four two. Go ahead, Gordon. What's your position? Oh, why don't you answer? Oh, how can I, you idiot? Oh, yeah? Well, how would you like a massage? Right on the button. I want you to know I feel terribly sorry and entirely responsible for all this. Now, oh, forget it. These things just happen. No, I kept egging you on, urging you to take chances, but it meant so much that I... You must be kind of crazy about this guy in San Francisco. What guy in San Francisco? Yeah, I'll skip it. It's none of my business. No, we won't skip it. What did Stefani tell you? Oh, he made a couple of cracks. All right, now I'm going to make a couple of cracks. Don't bother. I'm going to just the same. Shortly after I became engaged to that Russian you read about in the paper, I found out that he was, well, a rat. Listen, you don't have Shut to... Shut up. After I broke our engagement, he came to America. Somehow, he met my sister. She's only a kid. She fell for all that lottie da Worse. I arrived home yesterday and found that they left for San Francisco two days ago. I've got to stop them. Her happiness means a great deal to me. She marries that. They're supposed to sail for Honolulu tomorrow at noon unless... And that scallion back there? He's the brother. They'd do anything to stop me. K means a lot of money to them. Oh, gee, I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad it's your sister. I don't mean I'm glad it's your sister. I... Well, the outlook doesn't look particularly bright at the moment, but... If there's any chance of getting you to the coast on time tomorrow, I, I'll do it. Thank you. You must hate me for all the trouble I've caused. That's the funny part of it. I don't. You know, that agreement of ours, that if I got you to San Francisco on time, we'd have dinner together? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you suppose you could extend that time limit? Let's wait and see what time we get there. Oh, we'll have plank steak, smothered in onions, and hash browns. We'll pop it off with apple pie. Ah, oh, that's done it. Did you see it? See what? I mean, that light. What light? It came and went a couple of times like a fire or a match. No, it was over on this side. I don't see anything. Do you suppose it was Palmer? Oh, no, it was just the house stick putting out the cat. Do you think he'll try to get back? Hey, he's a cinch. Our only chance is to get off in the morning before he shows up. And if he gets here first? I'd give my left arm if I had a gun. Say, how's your nerve? Well, I think it'll get by. That's great, because we're going to give it a workout. Go in the cabin. Here, do you see this? I got some of this stuff in my eyes once, and I couldn't see or breathe. The squirt yards like a gun. He'll never give you a chance to use it. Well, not me, maybe. But he won't be watching you. Oh. Now, if the party gets rough, you sit in your seat and hide it under your coat. Then I'll maneuver him into position, and you let him have it. You think you can do it? I can try. Good girl.
Wake up, Ann. How do you feel, boy? Oh, he's a lot better. Do you think we can get out of here? I'm going to try. Here, I'll help. No, oh, Freddie, no. Don't cross your luck, Freddie. Stay quiet. I'm all right, Jack. Sure you're all right, but I can manage. Any sign of Palmer? No. Nope. All right with you if we leave him here? It's morning. Oh. No. We're pushing off. Was it clear enough? I think so. Out of sight. All right. What do you want? Coming aboard and I'm healed. I don't think you've got a gun, but if you have, forget it. Well, let's cut out the shooting. There's been enough already. It's going to be more if you talk out of turn. Quick now. What? The fire extinguisher. Uh Get in your seat. Who's got that fire extinguisher? You mean this? Yeah, give it here. Hello, everybody. Wintry, isn't it? Well, there you are, and here we are. So what? This is what. If any of you want trouble, start it, and I'll finish it. So it's you, is it? All right, Rallo, I've got some plans for you. In the meantime, keep that trap of yours shut. You've been enough trouble for one trip. Well, if it ain't the old specialist himself. How's the great American detective, Doc? How is he, I asked you? What's the matter with all of you? He may pull through if we get him to a hospital. And that's one thing I'm not worried about. He's still alive? Hello, beautiful. Don't get on your high horse, sister. Plenty of swell dames have gone for me. do now. Can you take off? I'm not sure. What are you starting that engine for? To keep the cabin warm. Why can't you fly out of here? Well, it's a small field and snow and, and a heavy load. Come on, can the funny stuff. It's hard and smooth and downhill, and if you can't take off from it, maybe I can. You'd break your neck and everybody else's. We won't have to worry about anybody else. Get out and make it snappy. You can't do that. Who says I can't? That kid can't live out there. I have an hour. What am I supposed to do? Burst into tears? Get out. All of you. If they get out, this plane doesn't budge. Listen, if you think you've got me over a barrel because you're the only one that can fly this plane, you're crazy. I will if I have to. Where? Mexico. All right, I'll fly you on one condition. These people stay in the plane. Okay, I'll be a sucker. But get this. You'll fly and I'll ride the co-pilot seat. And if you try any funny business, I'll fly the rest of the way myself. I get it. 
Now start him up and let's get going. Wait a minute. Who's got that fire extinguisher? No, no, not me. Give me that. So you thought you could squirt me out like a bonfire? If I didn't need you, you stay here. I'll need you for company. The rest of you get out and get out quick. You'll be arrested for this. All right, sister, go call a cop. Call a couple of cops. Get out. Oh. You can't. I'd as soon kill you as look at you. How about me? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah, I guess he's through for a while. Waldemar, you were swell. Boy, did we fix him. And did you suck him. This trip is more darn fun. Tie him up, somebody, before he gets funny again. Handcuffs. My pocket. Now, just a moment. If you... Listen, go... one more crack out of you and you'll go places with him. Me? What have I done? Attempting to delay the United States mail. Assaulting a carrier of the United States mail. Attempted bribery of a post office employee. Carrying a gun without a permit. Is that enough or do I have to dig up some more for you? Oh, well, I was just trying... Shut up! Get up front. Might as well learn now as later. What? To fly. But I... Shut up and do as I tell you. Here, wobble this. Fasten your seatbelts. be wonderful. What's going to be wonderful? Our having dinner together tonight. Why, I said that. You said you'd have dinner with me if I got you to San Francisco by noon. Well, there it is. And now, could I interest you in a large and handsome ring and a large and battered pilot because I'd like to return them both to their owner? I only own one of them. 
That's what you think. Well? The Fremont Hotel, 8 o'clock. She was a metal type. 